Queensland wine industry is celebrating after a record haul of gold medals at the Australian Small Wine Producers Show in Stanthorpe. For several days this week, a team of judges has been sniffing, swirling and tasting 1,800 wines produced by more than 300 small wineries from around the country. As Landline's Pip Courtney reports from the Granite Belt, industry leaders hope the good results will improve the reputation of Queensland wine and encourage more people to try it. Wine show entries around the country have been down by as much as 30% this year, a sign of tough times as the industry struggles with oversupply and low prices. Organisers of the Australian Small Wine Producers Show, though, were pleased their entries for the 39th annual show held up. 90% of Australian wineries are eligible to enter. This is quite a major show on the Australian wine circuit. We offer the premier forum for winemakers who do less than 500 tonne to enter their wines and be judged against their peers. Um, wineries who do more than 500 tonne, which is the big wineries in Australia, aren't allowed to enter. So these are small guys who love their wine, know their craft, typically grow the grapes themselves and make it themselves, get to see who's the best. So at the other shows, do, do the big guys really sort of outmuscle some of the little players? Definitely, yeah. And, and that comes down to the fact that they can afford to enter all these shows. So they might have a range of 200 wines and they'll enter those 200 wines, whereas these guys, they might have one wine. While industry big guns can't enter, they do provide judges. And they send some top names too, like David Morris from Morris Wines, Joel Tilbrook from Brown Brothers and Kevin Glastonbury from Yolumba. They're not here to go soft on the industry's smaller players either. Is a gold medal here then still worth the same as if you won a gold medal competing against the big guys? Absolutely. The, the medals here stand alone anywhere. We're, we're certainly not giving gold medals away for the sake of giving gold medals. We're, we're giving awards based on absolute quality. Like every other wine show, this one's the stuff of logistical nightmares. 62 classes, 20,000 wine glasses and mountains of paperwork. There's nearly 8,000 bottles of wine uh, to be opened and poured. 1,800 wines by 21 judges is a glass of wine to be poured every six seconds for four days. Ian Henderson's in charge of this side of the Hessian, an area no judge may enter or even look at. They're judging on a complete impartial basis. So if they could see the labels, they could possibly determine what wine it is they're judging. I head the team of stewards and we are one side of the barrier. We collate the wines, assemble them and pour them. And the judges, headed by the chairman, is on the other side of the barrier. My job's to get them the wine at the right time in the right glass. Their job's to get me a result. Once a judging panel's done, the chairman is summoned to approve a result. If there's no wines in the class up to any medal status, they won't, grant, give, won't give them just for the sake of giving them. You've got to be up to the, the standard to achieve those medals. David Morris enjoys seeing what Australia's small winemakers are up to. The small winemakers have got small batches and they can fiddle with them and they can try different things where the big winemakers only got big tanks and they're not going to um, have anything go wrong and so they try and probably control their winemaking a little bit more um, know that the small winemakers are always the adventurous ones and uh, great results have come from that over the past, I think. The bottle opening, wine pouring, glass washing, spittoon emptying stewards that keep the show going are local volunteers. Their ranks included retirees, farmers, a teacher, an electrician, a musician, an IT consultant, an insurance broker and a posse of winemakers hungry to learn. The judges do all the work and we get to sort of enjoy the rewards of what they do and get to taste the wines behind the scenes and um, get to have a look at stuff like gold, silvers, bronzes and even wines that are faulty so then we can uh, have a look at you know, what's good, what's bad. Do you think you're a better winemaker because of what you see behind the scenes here and what you get to taste? Definitely, 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 definitely. Yeah, it, it, it always helps. Um, if you don't look at things, your palate gets tired and you forget things. Um, so it's always good to update, keep your palate fresh. The Costanzo family winery Golden Grove is at Ballandine on the Granite Belt. Golden Grove has snagged gold here before and this year the judges rated their wines so well it was named Champion Small Winery of the Show. 
Is it frustrating that there are still some people who say Queensland wine is rubbish? Very frustrating, very, very, very frustrating because we know um, as far as um, the granite belt goes that we do make excellent wines and we are fighting in amongst the rest of Australia uh, and, and winning awards. So for people to say that they are rubbish, um, it does hurt. Uh, we are still trying to, you know, get that image away. It's going to take a while, but I think we're winning the battle, yeah. Ray Costanzo wants more people to try Queensland wines. So, yeah, get to your local bottle shop, ask them about Queensland wines, why you, you don't have Queensland wines if they don't, and, and definitely, um, definitely get into them because they, they are very good. And the chief judge says, go ahead, be curious. Don't have a, a singular palate. Go and there's, there's wines of the world and all great regions in Australia. You should be trying the lot. The judges didn't know it, but they awarded Queensland wines 92 medals, nine gold, 21 silver and 52 bronze. I'm pretty excited how Queensland has done. Uh, this will be a record haul for gold medals for Queensland this year. There's actually nine Queensland gold medals up from six, which was the previous record. It's, it's awesome. There are some very fine, fine wines, and I think what this area can offer also is, is alternate varieties, and it can do it very well with um, some alternate reds and alternate whites as well. So um, give, us another, give the area another 10 years or so, and, and who knows, it may well be really challenging some of the more established wine, wine regions. A highlight for Ian Henderson was local winemaker Robert Shannon picking up a gold for his Singing Lake sparkling wine. It's a class usually dominated by southerners. For a Queensland winery to win a national trophy judged amongst its peers from right across the country, that's a huge win uh, for the producer and for the state. The judges might be done, but the show continues tomorrow with a public tasting. For a pretty small fee, you can come and try, you know, 1,800 of Australia's best wines in one room at one time for three hours. It's a pretty good afternoon. The judges have judged the winemakers. Now the public can judge the judges. We quite often see the public come and taste a gold medal wine and don't necessarily agree with it. And we see wines that we know from the labels that sell really well at high prices and may not necessarily get a, a medal this year. So judges aren't always right, but don't tell them I said that.